Hi there, this is H. Victoria Hargrove Atkerson. I'm an author and a writer, and I write historical romance, and sometimes just romance, because I love that, and I ask each one of you to think about what you adore, what you love, what are you passionate about, and then you are to write about that, okay? Don't write about anything you don't have some feelings for, or curiosity for. If you don't know about a subject matter or a, tr a treatment, then go find out, go look. But the best thing, the best barometer to find out what you need to write about is to go to your own consciousness and think about the things that you're most passionate about, okay? So I'm gonna to talk today a little bit about writing and why we write. Okay, one of the main reasons we we write is to communicate with other people. And I think we have plenty of examples of that, even from uh, our uh, letter writing skills that we did, I know, years ago. One of the main forms of getting to a friend or family member who lived a distance away was to write letters. And we did tons and tons of that. The post office was loaded down with letters. Now the, everything has changed because of the computer, which is really wonderful. <laughs> we now email people and we also text people. So in a flash, you don't have to wait three to 10 days for your letter to get somewhere. You can get there in a few seconds. And sometimes we think that's not fast enough. But writing is a great way to communicate with other people. So when you think of something you want to write, whether it's uh, a feeling you have, you want to express that in a poem, or if a frustration you have, you want to express that in a documentary or uh, journalistic uh, dissertation, whatever you like to do, make sure you write about something that you absolutely love. The other reason we want to do, <laughs> we want to write, is to make sure we hold on to stories and history, which I think is fascinating for me because one of the things I found in my walk on this planet is that our history, black history, has been severely neglected. I love history and I also love to tell stories about black America and being black in America. So I combine the things that I love because I'm always doing research now. One, uh, this. June, I'll be going out to Phoenix and Tombstone, Arizona, and I'll be working, doing some research with the Buffalo Soldiers, and I'll be selling my books out there, which will be absolutely great. I can't wait. <laughs> but the history out there is absolutely rich with African-American history, and people don't think about the fact that blacks and Mexicans were the first cowboys. You know, the whites did not get into that profession until after the Civil War, when everything was burned behind them. They came out west to make a living, to get into the cattle business. Mexicans and Africans were doing that centuries for centuries. As a matter of fact, Mexico was running cattle into America for hundreds and hundreds of years. So history is very important, and it's important that we keep the uh, story straight <laughs> and correct the stories that have been incorrectly per perpetrated, especially as far as our, our black history is concerned. So uh, another reason we want to do is to share, which I do, share knowledge with people. In my stories, I try to share things about the black migration from slavery to other areas of the country and other areas of the world. So if you something you want to share that you're passionate about, that you love, or that you just think you, you're fascinated with, write about those things because that's what uh, you do. That's what makes you uh, an effective writer when you write about something you really love because your passion comes through. I, I, am, uh, I love romance. So I combined the two things I liked the most, which is history and romance. <laughs> so it's really cool. I'm enjoying it. And I did that in five novels so far, folks. Five. Okay? And we're going to review them very quickly. Um, my first one is a wonderful love story. First, My first two. 
uh, stones along the path, one and two. Like I said, this, we're talking about history. It's a lot of African American history in this because it talks about uh, being African and also there's a cultural and traditional conflict between the two main characters. They are in love, but they are in agony because it's from two different worlds. And the drama begins, like I said, at the beginning of the book where they break up. And this part two, I think is very fascinating because we talk about one of the, one of the most uh, colorful people on the planet, which are the Bush people. Excellent and talk about they are the most ancient people of the world and they're also the most knowledgeable about our environment. And they also are environmentally correct in their lifestyle. So we need to take a look at that just for our survival. Okay, and the next one was walking among the kutsu. Kutsu takes you into, a check into adolescence and the problems that adolescents have. This is a black child who looks white, has a lot of white features. As you know, in this country, many of us are mixed with many different things, and some show it more evidently than others. But this book is talking about a child who is rejected because of her white features. So, this is a, a real good one here. This is all the bells and whistles as far as romance and black life during the apartheid era here in this country when blacks had to live in substandard conditions outside of the normal society. They were not a privileged to be a part of the business world or whatever unless they created it themselves. And many of them did. There were many black businesses that were created even at, right after slavery was over. I mean, people, black people were creating businesses for themselves. And one reason for that was because they weren't allowed to do anything else. They were not allowed in white establishments. So they created their own. And my last one, which is coming up, not coming up, but it's here. But I will see you on the road because we start my tours starting next month. And we will be doing book sales and uh, book festivals, book fairs all over the country, mostly on the East Coast because I live on the East Coast. But I will be going out west a couple of times. And I do have an interview coming up in with a group, I think it's uh, a cable station out in Los Angeles. So we'll, I'll get an opportunity to tell people about what I do. Okay, now here we go. Here comes the good part. When you go to your bookstore, if they do not have my books, please, please ask them to stock it for you and be sure to tell your friends about it. Now be sure to like this program before you go and also push the red button. <laughs> that is a subscription button. It doesn't cost you anything. All it does is let you know when I post a video. Join my video family and Love someone special and love to you. Thank you for tuning in. Take care.